So now let's get started building the very first part of our app. And that part is the HTML files that will represent uh, the data that our app is going to show and the data that our app can accept. So I'll close out example.html because we won't be using it anymore. And I have these HTML files that I uh, created with Bootstrap. So let's just take a look at them now. Uh, this is what the guest book is going to look like on the home page. And then the sign the guest book page is going to look like this. So you pass in a name and a comment and then you hit sign. So I'll add those two to my project. So intro to Flask here and then templates. And I'll move over the HTML files so I have access to them. But now we see I have this CSS file here. I can't just put it in my templates directory because it's not a template. So what I need to do is create a static directory and this will be for any static resources. So C CSS files or JavaScript files and I'll put it there. But to use it, I have to do something a little special in Jinja. So I'll load the index and the sign file. And for every CSS call here, I'll replace it with um, some Jinja code to call it. So let me just copy this and put it over here so I can see it. And the way I use this is by doing um, a variable. So this variable will actually be a function call. So this function is URL underscore four. And I'm going to pass in static. So this is meaning the static directory that I just created and then the file name. So file name is going to be equal to this. So let me copy that again and paste it here and close that out and have the closing curly brackets. So this is how I use static resources inside of my HTML file. There are many ways to actually use static resources in a Flask app, but this is a very simple way. So this is the way I'm showing you. So basically it's looking for the static directory and inside the static directory, it's going to look for the file CSS slash bootstrap.min.css. So let me quickly do that for the other things. URL four static file name equals this and I'll close it out and there's one more in this file so I'll copy that URL for static file name equals that and close it out and I have my sign.html file so I'll do the very same thing there so URL for static file name equals and then close it out and finally one more and of course you can get these files by going to the link in the description so you don't have to kind of write this HTML from from scratch I figure it wouldn't be very exciting if I wrote uh, all this HTML in this video series so I'll save that there so now I'll create two routes that will return these two files. So let me go back to guestbook and I'll push these two routes down. Well, actually I want my uh, index to be the index file that I have here. So instead of hello there, I'll return index.html. So move that back up and then underneath it, I'll have another route and I'll just call this sign and I'll return render template sign.html. So I'll save that. And now if I go to the index, I see this guestbook page. And if I go to sign, I see the sign page. So if I go back and I see there's a link to sign the guestbook. So I want to actually make a link to this route sign. So to do that, I'll have to use URL four inside of the template, just like I did with the static resources. So to replace the actual link, I'll be using URL four again. So here it is down here where this pound sign is, and I'm going to use URL four and I'm going to pass in sign. So what this is going to do is it's going to look for the view function name sign and then get the associated route slash sign. If this was something else like sign page and the route was still slash sign and I pass in sign page here, it will still return slash sign. So I'll save that and I'll run this and let's take a look. 
So now when I hit the link to sign the guest book, it takes me directly to the sign page because it uh, determined the URL endpoint from the name of the view function. So that's it for actually loading uh, the HTML for our app. So in the next video, I'll show you how to actually accept data from this sign-in form and display it on this guest book homepage.